In this video, we'll take a look at the stereospecificity of the E2 elimination reaction. So first, identify your alpha carbon, right? So that's the one with your halogen attached to it. So here is our alpha carbon. And our beta carbon is this one right here. So that's our beta carbon. And there's a beta proton on it, right? This is our beta proton. This time, there's only one proton at the beta position. So we're only going to get one Newman projection and only one stereoisomer is possible from this reaction. That's different from the last video where we saw that we had two possible protons at the beta position giving us two different conformations, two products, but one of those stereoisomers was favored. So in this case, we're only going to get one product. And let's start by staring down our alpha-beta bond here. So I'm going to put my eye right here. And we're going to stare down our alpha beta bond again. So we're going to stare down right here. And we're going to try to draw the Newman projection uh, for what we see. All right? So we're staring at this carbon right here. And there is a methyl group to the right. So if I'm looking that way, the methyl group ends up being on the right side. So it's going to be over here. And then this hydrogen over here is going to be on the left. So hydrogen to the left. And then I have this benzene ring down here, right? So this whole benzene ring down here. And instead of drawing out the benzene ring, uh, we're, we're, we're going to call it a phenyl group, right? So phenyl group. And pH is the abbreviation for that. So instead of drawing out a benzene ring, we're going to say it's a phenyl group. And we're going to put a pH right here going down. All right, so my back carbon, right, which would turn out to be my alpha carbon in this case, we represent that with our circle. And in this case, there's a phenyl group going up. right? There's a phenyl group going up relative to where we are looking. So there's a phenyl group going up. Once again, use your, use your model set to actually do this yourself. All right, and then we have, let's see, what else do we have here? A bromine to the right, bromine to the right over here. And then finally, a hydrogen to the left, right? This hydrogen to the left right here. So we have our Newman projection. All right, and just like we did in the last video, uh, we need to look at it from a slightly different viewpoint in order to help us out with this mechanism. So in this video, we're going to make we're going to make this proton the top, right? That hydrogen is going to be the top, and we're going to make this bromine here the bottom. So once again, just like the last video, I'm going to redraw this Newman projection. Uh, I'm not going to show any rotation of any bonds. I'm just going to change your viewpoint, right? So we're going to put this as the top here. So that hydrogen is going to be at the top of our Newman projection. And that hydrogen, of course, is connected to this carbon. And what's going to be on the right side this time? Well, it's going to be this methyl group. So this methyl group is going to be on the right side. And then there's a phenyl group over here to the left. So once again, I didn't, I didn't change anything. I didn't change anything. So a phenyl group ends up over here on the left. All right, so what else do I have? I need to draw my back carbon in here. So I draw my back carbon in here. And you know what? Let me just change that phenyl group here. I like how it looked. Let me go ahead and just write it this way. So phenyl. And now I'll put in my back carbon. OK, so what's attached to my back carbon? Well, between the hydrogen and the methyl group, that's where our other phenyl group was. right? So if you, if you look at it, between the hydrogen and the methyl group, that's this phenyl group. So that's going to go over here. So this phenyl group goes over here. And then the bromine is going to end up at the bottom. Right? So the bromine is over here. And then there's one more thing left, and that's, of course, hydrogen. OK, so this is our Newman projection. And we, we could just use our Newman projection, but sometimes it's easier to draw the sawhorse projection as well. So let's go ahead and draw this out as a sawhorse projection. Um, and let's see, our front carbon would end up like this, and our back carbon would end up like a Y, like this. All right, and there's a hydrogen here on my front carbon. There is a phenyl group on my front carbon. There is a methyl group on my front carbon. On my back carbon, there's a hydrogen. There's a phenyl group to the right. And then there's our bromine going down. OK, so now that we have our, our sawhorse projection and our Newman projection, we're all set to finally draw our product. So we know in our mechanism, right, sodium ethoxide is our base. 
Okay, so our base is going to take the anti-periplanar proton. So now we have to identify the anti-periplanar proton on our Newman projection and our sawhorse projection. So if we look at our Newman projection, our anti-periplanar proton, right, this is our bromine, it's the one in the same plane as our bromine. So it's this one right here. So if we go over here to our sawhorse projection, right, here's our bromine. Our anti-periplanar proton is the one in the same plane all right, so there it is. All right, so that is the proton that the base is going to take, right? So when we show our mechanism, we can show our base coming along here to take this proton, right? Which means that these electrons are going to move in here to form your double bond, and then these electrons are going to kick off onto bromine, which is your leaving group. So if I were to draw the product of this reaction, I need to think about, okay, where is the double bond forming? And what is that going to give me in terms of products, right? So uh, it's a little bit easier to look at the Newman projection, I think, to see that this phenyl group is opposite of this phenyl group, right? The double bond is going to form between this carbon and this carbon. So if the double bond forms between those two, the phenyl groups are on opposite sides. So I think it's a little bit easier to see that on the on the Newman projection than the sawhorse projection. Although you, although you can still see it here on the sawhorse projection, right? This phenyl group is going to be on opposite sides from that phenyl group. Maybe it's a little bit easier to see that this hydrogen is going to be on an opposite side from this methyl group, right? So another way of looking at it would be to say would be to say that this hydrogen here is going to be on an opposite side from that methyl group. And this this, make, this now makes it very easy to draw our product, right? If we were to draw our product, we know that we're going to form a double bond. We know that the hydrogen is going to be on an opposite side from this methyl group, right? And we know that our phenyl groups are going to be on opposite sides of the double bond as well. So this is our this is our one stereoisomer that forms. Okay, this is the only one that forms because we had only one beta proton. Let's identify which stereoisomer it is. So we saw how to do that in an earlier video, right? We go ahead and we look at the carbon on the left. So we look at this carbon right here and we assign priority based on increasing atomic number and that would give our phenyl group a number 1 and our methyl group a number 2. We go over here to this carbon, and the phenyl group is going to have a higher priority than, than our hydrogen right here. So then when we draw our line like this, we can see that our two highest priority groups are on opposite sides of the double bond, and we call that the E stereoisomer. So this reaction will give us the E stereoisomer only. We will not get the Z stereoisomer, so that's why this reaction is stereospecific.